Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about a really crazy alien story. It's one of Canada's best, most documented alien encounters that's ever happened. They actually made a special memorable coin after it. So get ready, buckle up. This story is insane. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, share, blah, 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 do all that stuff, and let's get started. So the Falcon Lake incident happened in Canada, and it's really crazy too because it's said to be Roswell because the United States still doesn't even recognize that that happened or anything out of the ordinary happened. So Stephen Michalak, he's from Poland. I don't know if I'm saying the last name right. On May 20th, 1967, he was actually searching around Falcon Lake area for minerals, things like that. And he actually heard a lot of geese up above him. They were like cackling and just making weird geese noises. So naturally he kind of like jumped up, looked up. When he looked up, he saw these two huge oval objects in the sky and he kind of like stared at them for a second like, what the heck? And he said when he was looking at them, they were like traveling downwards. And he said that the one immediately came to a stop as it was traveling downward and the other one kind of flew onto like this flat rock and went there. He says it was about 160 feet away. And then he says he started to approach it and he said it looked like a big bowl. It looked like a big, huge dome type. He says it was about 40 feet tall and like 15 feet wide and it reeked of sulfur and weird gases. He kind of wanted to go in and like see if everyone was okay, if they needed help. He thought it was like a military type of craft at first and he said he kind of went to like go peek inside and he claims, and this is a quote, he heard muffled voices. They sounded like humans. I was able to make out two distinct voices, one with a higher pitch than the other. He says that he started addressing them in Russian, Polish, and German, asking if they needed help or anything like that, but he got no response. He said when he poked his head in, he saw like a maze of lights on the inside. He said that he couldn't see anyone or anything that was living. And he says at that moment, three panels slammed back and it actually sealed the opening. He says that as he stepped back, like to get out of the way, he kind of touched the side of it and it actually burnt his glove and there's photos of it. And then that's when the object rose and his shirt like caught on fire and went into flames and there's photos of it. I'm going to insert it as well. He ripped them off like, you know, scared to death and that's when it kind of flew away. Said he felt really disoriented, immediately really nauseous and he actually went and threw up in the woods. He ended up making his way back to his hotel room and then he ended up getting a ride to the hospital. After he finally got to the hospital, he was treated for all his burn and it was mainly on his chest and his stomach and then it turned into sores. And what's really strange is it looked like a grid-like pattern. It wasn't something typical with, you know, oops, I burnt myself on the stove. What's crazy too is until the day he died in 1999 at the age of 83, he says that he wishes he never would have saw it. He said it changed his life. Afterwards, he constantly suffered from diarrhea, vision loss, anorexia, blackouts, headaches. People swarmed his house wanting to know what happened. He was constantly interrogated by police. People just didn't leave him alone. He was actually in the military before all of this had happened. So when he saw it, the reason he reported it is because he thought it was, he, he didn't think it was an alien spaceship. He actually thought that like maybe it was something military wise. At the time he said it felt like it was his duty to let people know that if they come across that, don't touch it, don't mess with it, it hurt you. Crazy too, up until the day he died he never backed away from this story he never changed his story he never made things up you know to make it seem more impressive or believable he always stuck to exactly what has happened and that right there shows me that he's probably not making it up because a lot of times when people make up stuff they'll change the story they'll make it sound more exciting or you know if somebody else is talking to them and they kind of want them to say something they might spin it in a different direction but he stuck to his story up until the day he died and he also never claimed to actually have seen aliens. He said he could only hear muffled sounds. And it's said too that if you ask him what he saw, he could go into exact detail just like it happened yesterday, but he will never say that he knew for 100% that it was extraterrestrial, even though that's what everyone seems to think and 
believe this was actually investigated really intensely even from the United States Air Force it was investigated and the case still to this day is completely unexplained there's lots of things recovered from the scene and like Steven's glove, his shirt, there's like pieces of metal, rock, and they ended up going through a lot of analysis. Also went through crime labs and it says too that a lot of these minerals that are found on all of this, they can't determine that it came from the earth. They have no idea. They've never seen these type of minerals that are on like these pieces of metal and they can't determine where the burns came from. What's crazy too is the piece of metal that was taken is still radioactive to this day. They actually sent him to a psychologist as well to see if he's telling the truth, if he seems, you know, like something else is going on with him. And the psychiatrist says, who came back with the very report, that this is a fellow who's very pragmatic, very down to earth, pardon the pump, and does not make up stories. That is the case of Falcon Lake. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it could have been some type of military craft? I believe that it was definitely aliens. I'm a believer. I don't see why he would make this stuff up. He kind of wanted to live alone and like out of the public eye after this happened. I don't see why somebody would go through all the hassle of making these things up just to be like, oh, I wish this never happened to me. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.